<clears throat> Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. A little warm this morning, huh? Oh. It's hot, hot out there, no? Well, we're gonna better fire it up at the Holy Spirit. Today is one of our, as we, I mentioned earlier, one of our foundation feasts uh, for just our own identity in Christ. Um, uh, here we see Jesus' baptism, and <clears throat> from there we learn a lot about what happens at our own baptism. So uh, here is Jesus baptized. This is the time when he definitively, in, in his human flesh, receives the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit upon him. And it's from this moment on, the Spirit will first takes him into the wilderness, and he goes through temptation and overcomes the temptation. And he comes out of that experience full of, it says, not just full of the Holy Spirit, but full of the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no mention of power of the Holy Spirit until after the wilderness experience, after he's, he succeeds through the temptation. Um, so next time you're tempted, rejoice, you know. If you, if you push through, more power of the Holy Spirit come, can come through your life after that. Uh, this is very foundational for us. It, it is also kind of a part two from yesterday's Feast of the Epiphany. This is what we said yesterday, another one of the Epiphany experiences. One of the times we recognize Jesus is the Messiah of God, the Son of God, Savior of the world. Uh, all this revealed from the Father's voice and from the Holy Spirit coming down to confirm um, really a word or a prophecy that John the, Baptist, John the Baptist had received. Um, now, all of this points to us. We, we've said before, it's, another, it's a good principle that we want to keep in mind. Anytime we're celebrating a feast or celebration of Jesus or of Mary, we are not just celebrating them, we're celebrating also what God has done or wants to do in our life as well. This is the, the, the connecting principle we always have to make. This is foundational in our Catholic Church. So today, if we're celebrating the baptism of Jesus, we also look at, okay, this is either what God wants to do or has already done in our lives as well. So if, if you haven't been baptized, it's what he wants to do still. If you have been baptized, it, this feast celebrates things that he's already done in our life as well. And, and so we say, one of, the, one of the ways we say it in the church is that we are baptized into Christ. Now we're members of his body, or we are in Christ. And so uh, simply put, whatever, from that moment on, as soon as you've been baptized in Christ and are a member of his body, a member of the family of God, and you are in Christ, now everything that is said about Christ is said about you. Everything that's said about Christ in the Gospels is said about you, because you're in him. It's like if somebody sp spoke really well and complimented um, this parish, well, they'd also be speaking well of you as members of this parish. If somebody was speaking really well and blessing and complimenting your family, they'd be talking about you, too, because you're part of your family, right? So if somebody is speaking even the Father himself speaking about Christ, and you and I are in Christ, well, then he's speaking about us as well. So we have to begin to see ourselves included, joined with Christ, because Christ is joined with us for all eternity. He'll never be unjoined. <laughs> we are forever one now. And that all began at that moment of, of your baptism. So uh, whatever is said today in our gospel, is true of us as well. Whatever said of Christ is true of us as well. So I wrote down some true statements we can take from our gospel today. And it's important, this can be a good practical, you could say homework that you do on your own to, to grow in the truth of how God sees you. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna form our lives and learn to see ourselves as God sees us, not as somebody else sees us, not as my past has seen me, not even as I might see myself, whether I have a good days or bad days, but how God sees me. Because that's how eternity sees me. That's how heaven sees me. That's the truth. That's how truth sees me. And we need to do this at our baptism. Our spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes inside of us and regenerates or rebirths our human spirit that was born dead ever since the, the sin of Adam and Eve. So our spirit is, made, is born again, made new, renewed, it's perfect, and the Spirit of God is joined with our perfect spirit. Remember, we are spirit, soul, and body. We're, that's, we're three parts, one person. Our mind or our soul still needs to be renewed and to line up with the spirit. 
the Spirit is true and speaks the truth to us. Actually, this is where we, Paul says that we have also received the mind of Christ. So now we can know God's thoughts, God's words, God's intentions, because we have the mind, the very mind of God, the logos of God inside of us with the Holy Spirit. The key is lining up our human mind with the mind of Christ. And so that's what we call what Paul says, renew your mind. We have to, in a sense, wash our mind, wash our brain with the water of the word of God, with the truth that's written in the scriptures. To the extent, to the degree that my mind, my human mind, is aligned with the mind of Christ or the truth of Christ in, my, in the spirit, then the power of God flows out of me. Otherwise, truth is, the truth in the spirit of God inside me is speaking one thing and trying to come out, but my mind could block it, say, oh, I don't know, I heard something else, or, you know, Father said something else the other day, or, well, the tradition that I, always was, that I grew up to was taught said this, and the truth can be coming out of us, and our mind can block it with doubt or with bad teaching. So we have to line this thing up with, with the spirit of God inside of us. And that's when we begin, when that starts happening, when these two line up, we begin to see the Spirit of God manifest in our flesh, like Jesus. That's when we see the Spirit coming out. That's when we see the power coming out. That's when we see our true sonship coming out. All that, ha- now that's just, that has a discipline. A lot of times it's just reminding ourselves and getting in, ha- in the habit of thinking like Christ, thinking like the Bible says. So if we were to take truths, truths of our gospel just today and put them in a personal statements, um, this is what it would sound like. So let's try this together. Repeat after me. These are true statements right from our gospel. I didn't make any of this up. This is right here. You could do this on your own with any gospel passage. And the first one is, I am baptized into Jesus. So what's true of Jesus is true of me. God is my father. Jesus is my brother. Jesus is my Lord. I am in Christ. Therefore, I am God's child. The spirit of God is in me. The Holy Spirit has regenerated my spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in me. The Holy Spirit is joined to my spirit. Therefore, I am the beloved of God. I am the chosen of God. I am loved by Father God. I am pleasing to Father God. God is proud to be my Father. God is proud to call me his child. I am proud to call God my Father. Amen. See, those are pretty good true statements, but you could tell, depending on how your day went, you know, especially the feelings and emotions can come around and you might say, well, I don't really feel like I'm chosen by God today. Or like, I don't really feel loved by God today. I don't really feel like I was pleasing to God today. You see, but if this is, if the truth is in you more than, more than the feelings, the emotions that come and go, then the truth overrides those things and the Spirit of God continues to flow out of us fluently or smoothly. And and, um, and that's where we get more of the power to do what Jesus did, you know? Get rid of the doubt, keep getting the truth in our minds, renewing our minds. So um, let's stand together and um, renew our faith with the creed. I believe.